All right, so we're gonna move into a little example. And what's really fun is I'm actually gonna give you guys um, a URL where you guys can control one of my lights in the house. And then I'm gonna broke it so you guys don't mess with me too much. Um, so yes, I, I'm being 100% truthful here. You guys will be able to do this. So um, an example, I have this uh, smart light called LifeX. Um, I really like this company. I like their bulbs and stuff like this because um, I'm not hashtag not sponsored or whatever, right? But like, um, uh, I do really like their stuff. Um, they're, they make things that are very um, privacy like focused. So they're making sure like, you know, you can do certain things and stuff like this. You can actually completely take it off the grid if you wanted to, um, if you know what you're doing. Um, and they have this great, you know, API documentation. So with any good API, it's only as good as the documentation. So the more API, um, documentation. I'm going to send this to you guys so you guys kind of go through it. Um, everyone has their different way of like formatting their um, documentation. Some is very, very well detailed. Some is like basically nothing. Um, LifeX actually does a pretty good job of actually showing you some examples and stuff like this. In fact, you can even copy and paste more or less, you know, the Python code from here and actually see the different things you can do. Um, note in general that we have to do authentication. In general, like this means you're getting an API key. Usually that's free. Some services do cost money, but um, for the most part, you have to go to the service and actually ask for an API key. Um, and for the most part, you can generate it. In fact, you usually can get multiple API tokens depending on what application it is. So that way you can kind of keep track of what things doing. So for example, if you have like, let's say, I don't know, three different computers and it's the same account, you can make sure like if a computer like goes haywire and starts like doing a while loop that goes on forever and ever and ever and keeps asking for requests, you can know it's that specific computer. It's like, oh, it's authenticated for that one computer. So I know it's just that one computer. In fact, usually when you ask for an API token, it will actually generate a token and then it'll say, hey, save this token now because it's gone. I will never show it to you ever again. Um, and then if you refresh the page, it's gone. So that's kind of like the idea is like basically it's authenticating it is that one thing that you're asking for. Okay. Um, there's a few reasons why you do this um, for this part, but basically the real reason why you do API tokens is so you make sure like if, for example, a, you know, a computer goes haywire or someone purposely tries to like basically spam like um, the server, you can kind of imagine the server has like a limited like door size, like a door. And if you basically have each time you send a request, you're sending a person through that door. Well, if you basically send a whole bunch of requests, you can fill up the door and no one else can get through. So, one solution for the server is say, hey, if it's the same like person's, like it's the same computer sending the same like people over and over and over again, it's like, hey, like who's causing this issue? It's like, oh, it's like, it's Victor, revoke his token, right? And it's like, all right, you've reached your limit for today. You can't send any more requests or you're sending them too quickly. So that kind of helps the server basically manage load and stuff like this. Okay, so let's actually try to do something interesting, right? So I have JSON requests, uh, secrets. Now that secrets basically is just my own module. In fact, I will show you. I also have real secrets, which has my real secret in there. It doesn't really matter if you guys saw it because um, I'm gonna revoke it anyway at the end. Where am I? Data engineering APIs, secrets. Ooh, right? So basically just know I made my own little module here. I called it LifeX tokens. Note that technically you would have this whole bunch of junk and stuff like that you can play around with. Um, but this is all fake, right? Um, I also have my real secrets. But I'm going to keep it secret, right? I'm not going to tell you guys. So um, anyway, I'm going to import both of these guys. And you can see here. So it's like, OK, let's go ahead and see key validation. So let's go ahead and take our token. It's going to be lifex.default token. So this is actually going to pull out this default token, right? Token. And I'll go ahead and put this in here. This is, the, this is just knowing from like the H API documentation. I do lights at all. I put its headers, in this case, just off of H, uh, authentication. And I run this, like, cool, ran through. Let's go see the response. Ooh, hey, invalid token, because I didn't give it a real token. So if I want to give a real token, what would it do? So now you can see LifeX real, right? So now I have this real token in here, run this guy. And now I can say, hey, check this out. So this is where you can actually see, um, I have four different um, smart lights attached to this token. You can actually see it's all in JSON format. It's a list of each light in this case. And you can actually see the ID as well as the label. For example, this is my living room lamp. Uh, you can see connected is true. So if, for example, it's like disconnected from the internet, if it's power on, you can actually see color, brightness, effect, product. Um, people noticed before, like Kelvin, like, wait, can you change the temperature? It's Kelvin being like the light temperature, like the color of light, not the literal temperature of the um, light. But anyway, you can see things like, you know, some information stuff like this. So like, okay, cool. So you can actually get data from here. You can also then send requests and say, hey, change things up. 
Um, so let's say, for example, we just want to say, okay, let's just explore a little bit. Let's see what these results are. So I'm going to import pandas, look at this data frame. I'm actually going to take this data frame and actually import it from dictionary. Remember, lights is just this response right here, display lights, and you can see here, oh, I have a nice pre dictionary or nice data frame of all my information. Ooh, right? Um, I don't think there's anything you have to worry about in there. Um, most of this stuff is pretty private and stuff like that. It's not going to matter. Um, like you can't do anything with it. So you can already see like brightness is already set for some of these uh, lights and stuff like this. You can see if there's an effect, you can see they're connected. You can see this one's not connected, for example. Um, I think it's in my bedroom lights. Yep, you can see the labels. So all this fun stuff. Cool. All right. So let's say it's like, okay, I just want to see the labels, right? So I can go for lights and lights. So this is just the JSON format. I can print each label. Very cool. I can also, if I wanted using just JSON, I can actually pull up the ID, which is what I really need to basically send on the API request. Say, hey, don't just turn on like, you know, like what light do I turn on? Oh, I need an ID basically, right? To say, oh, it's that specific light. Um, note that this is the JSON way. I also showed it using um, pandas, using a data frame, and you'll see it's the same thing. Okay, look pretty good. All right, so let's go do something fun, right? So the light, it's actually right behind me over here. So you can kind of see it's been hanging out, you know, suspiciously powered off, right? So we can actually turn it on. So if I go ahead and run this guy, you should see, hey, it turned on. Ooh, pretty, right? Um, you can also see that that was the request. All I did selector was that specific ID, power on. If I wanted, for example, turn it off. There we go. So fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna have fun in a second because you guys couldn't do this in a second. I'll leave you guys access. So response that content, you can see a whole bunch of response. Ooh, it's hard to read, so you can just do .json. So you can actually see nice and pretty results, operation, selector, so basically say, what did you do? This is the ID, power on, results, ID, status, okay, label, living lamp. So this is like, okay, cool, like everything worked out. So it's kind of nice to give you some extra information. Um, you can also change the colors. So for example, you can say states here. I'm doing selector, period cycles, you can know all these interesting things. Let's turn it up a little brighter. Uh, let's say green, sound good? I think it's different enough from blue, so you should be able to see it come on. There it goes. So kind of faded and stuff like this. So you can do some fun stuff. Um, and of course, the response.json, you can see it should show the same thing and say what it changed. So you can see the results and stuff like this. I could also have changed it down to like a dimmer part, right? There it goes. So fun stuff. All right. I know, right? Fun for days, right? You could do all these things. Uh, I can also turn it off. So it's like, okay, turn it off. Cool. Um, note that invalid command, um, if you try doing an invalid command, for example, power 99999, not something you can do. It'll still do a response, right? But you'll see that this is an error. So a good API will actually give you an error and say, hey, something went wrong. So just kind of, you can do that. Okay, sound pretty good? Cool. All right, so I know we're technically at time, um, but I wanna give you guys a minute or two to kind of play around with this API. So I actually have a Google Colab here, and I'm gonna share you guys this URL, and you guys can run this code and actually change my lights around. So I'm going to send this on the Zoom chat. So first one to it, um, you can go ahead and do this. And if you actually start running, and note this is, looks a little different. This is Google Colab. This is actually the same as just running like a Jupyter notebook. So you can do that like control enter or click this run part right here. Um, no, I have the secret here. I, I don't think it really matters. I have it hidden technically like because it's being recorded, but I don't think it really matters. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this. This is my secret token that will only exist for the next like maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. I'll, get rid of it in a second. But I can go ahead and do this guy. And then just to show you guys, this is actually running on um, a server basically. So like you can actually run this completely separately. And let's go ahead. There we go, power on. There it goes. So you can see it turned on just very lightly. All right, now I want someone else. I don't know if anyone has it open. I want you guys to go ahead and to do this and uh, run it. And I think if you run this guy right here, by default, it'll change it to blue. Um, so I don't know if I, who's, who has it first. I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn it off just to make it obvious that it turns on. Okay. So I don't know who has it open. Give me a thumbs up if someone's got it. Okay. I see Jessica is going for it. Let's see if she can ch change it, turn it, change it on. Um, you guys can all run this thing. It just kind of gets this weird thing where like, um, sometimes you can overwrite other people's stuff. Is it working for you, Jessica? Okay, wait. So I think, yeah, I found blue in mm -hmm. there. I changed it to green. But wait, how do I 
play it. How do you run it? Yeah, I run it. Yeah, so make sure you first uh, run the imports that are going to be on the top here. Make sure you run this guy. You can click this run button or just control. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I saw it change blue. Nice. So yeah, so what's kind of cool while uh, you guys kind of play around with this um, is that you can send different um, different requests and stuff like this, you know, through the API. This obviously is much more of a function base, right? A little different from data science, but heck, you know, a little fun to basically control my light over here, right? You can kind of see that in real time versus just like wall of text. Um, but this can be really useful, for example, like, you know, if you want to do certain commands and stuff like this to have this change over, this is basically what web servers do. Um, it also is the same exact concept if you want to get data back. So just like when we saw the response back and we saw um, it actually give back information, um, it's the same thing if you use like a Yelp API, Twitter API, same concept. Cool. All right. Cool. Anyone else able to get it to work? You might have to change this to something different than blue. I mean, I guess you could change like, you know, this light's ID. Like, I guess you could change another light, but we won't be able to see it obviously from here. Cool. I think the brightness went up, right? What else is there? Red? Oh, someone turned it off. So we can do red. You know, red. It's a little dark. I think you can do like brightness and stuff like this. So this is where like obviously like you have to know the that's fun. It's kind of seeing different people use different things. <laughs> see if we can do that again. There you go. So there's a little bit brighter. So now you can Ooh, it's really red in here now. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can play around with this. You can also do color um, if you know um, what's it called? Uh, hex code. You can actually pass in specific colors in here. Um, some colors a little more obvious than others. Um, but yeah, um, kind of going through. Ooh, yeah, it's really cool to see this sprite. Um, do you guys have any overall questions about APIs or you know what we talked about so far? All right. Cool. All right, I'll stop the recording here since it's kind of playing around.